guys, welcome back to our channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. And on my channel, along with my husband, Chris, we do thrift store flips. We take thrift store found items and we give them new life. And we share the process and our vision of what we do to these items to get them ready to resell. And if you're not a reseller, maybe we just inspire you to look at an item that you have laying around your own home and just give it a little something something to make it a little happy place in your home. Get it out of that closet. So in today's video, this is not gonna be a long video. I have some lap trays. They don't sell extremely fast, but they do sell. I do have people ask for them, so I like to have some on hand, one in the booth at the time, and that's getting ready for the summer season. I was trying to get a whole bunch of items done at the same time, so this is actually part three of the Riser Lazy Susan tray kind of video. So I hope I will link down below the other two videos if you did not see those videos. So I'm just sharing you with you a process for these trays. So I hope you enjoy this kind of content. So here are three lap trays in one tray because when I'm out thrifting and I'm in the middle of doing something, I'm gonna throw it into the grouping. So this one actually got an extra little tray along with it so I could complete these so I didn't have one just hanging out for the next grouping. But this one was actually brand new. It was a William Sonoma. I'm not even sure if that image was supposed to be on there or if somebody set something on there but the price was perfect and then this is that rattan looking one textured i'm hoping to transform this a little bit yet again 309 it was priced just right and now i usually steer clear of these that is that fake wood but i'm hoping that with the technique i'm going to try on this piece that it adheres well and then along with i just could not pass up these beautiful flowers that were engraved in this piece so just like how i start on all my flips i go through and i remove any price tags any tags any manufacturer tags before i get these pieces all cleaned up i'm just using some hot water and some super clean and just getting all the any grime grease whatever is is a thrifted item you don't know what might who have touched it and what might prevent your paint from sticking then as I'm cleaning them, I'm like, oh, these are screws. I think I can remove the legs and paint them separately. Not always can you remove the legs on these lap trays, so I'm happy to be able to remove them so I can paint them separately. So like this one, the bottom, I could not remove the legs. They're glued. They're what are screwed in somehow. I couldn't take pop out the little dowels that were holding it in place. So I'm going to go through and just use some of this contact paper and protect that bottom. It's in very good shape. It's that fakey wood that's very shiny. So it doesn't have a lot of scrapes or anything on that. So I'm just going to protect it because I'm going to be spray, spray painting these and just working it right up the sides. As you see, it has that little area there that I just, there, I couldn't pop that off. It was permanent, and so I couldn't unscrew these legs on these. So since this isn't a huge group, and I'm just gonna mix up, I have this little container of some Annie Salone chalk paint in their black color. So I'm just gonna use this in a sprayer. I'm gonna water it down. So when you're watering down any saloon chalk paint, you wanna make sure it's the consistency where it does not warm onto the top. That means where when you're mixing it up, you, have, you know you have enough water ratio paint that it the paint when you're pulling up your stir stick, it just goes into it, the paint doesn't lay on top, which is what she considers wormy. So now I'm just using the Harbor Freight Hopper Sprayer. This is, well, I guess, not the cheapest or I don't know. I'm still on the fence about these hoppers. We were spoiled by the Graco sprayer that just has so much power and can just demolish a piece in no time. So the hoppers are nice for small groups. I can control this a little bit better than I can control the bigger one. I, when Chris isn't here, I never use our great big one because it has to go into a gallon of paint. So when it comes to chalk paint, you know, they don't come in gallons. So yeah, so the hoppers kind of, if I want to get pieces done without having to use a brush, I need to figure something out. Thank you. 
Now after the bottom of these pieces have dried, I need to go through and seal that chalk paint in and I'm gonna go through with some polycrylic in the mat because if I flip these pieces over and I don't seal them, I might mar them up a little bit. So I'm gonna be sealing in that black chalk paint anyway. So I'll just some kind of a clear coat is all you need. I, I kind of switched back and forth from the Rust-Oleum clear coat and matte also. What I did to the back of the pieces, I now am going to do to the front of the pieces, even though this is the only side that's getting painted on this tray. So if you're a regular to my channel, have you thrifted a turntable yet to be able to spray your items and be able to turn them with ease like this? I so hope that you have. So definitely when it came to this rattan caning piece, it was definitely the easiest to get this thing sprayed. And definitely that turntable came in handy so you can hit this at all different angles. So now for my white, I'm going to go in with the Annie Sloan in Pure. This is her Pure White. I'm loving the Annie Sloan. I'm loving testing out other paints right now. So that same thing, mixing it up with enough water so that it's not worming laying on top of the other paint. This is the easiest way for me to explain it because this is the way that they have now taught me how to water down properly so I don't get that frustration of it not going through my paint sprayer smoothly. So when it comes to painting white, I know that I'm not going to get a one coat coverage. That's just how white paint works. Well, I can, but I probably have a lot of drips and run. And especially since a lot of these are not real wood, this tray and that Williams-Sonoma is that very shiny surface. I know that there's really nothing for this paint to soak in. So I need to do a couple coats to get this white to be the coverage that I am looking for. So one of the by the rattan tray had a little bit of some problems, a little bit of bleed through, properly cleaned, who knows what gets on, it's a thrifted item. So I'm just going to seal it in with a couple coats of shellac and hope that I can cover it up with some white paint. Luckily it's the bottom, but usually this is the fix, just a couple coats of the shellac will seal that in so then you can go on to painting it again with white. Now before I put on any detail on these pieces, I'm going to go through and get them sanded and distressed. And I'm starting off with the Annie Sloan's scuffing pads. I just absolutely am in love with these. I like the softness of the back and that it comes in coarse, fine, and medium. And I'm starting right off with coarse to get some of this paint a moving. And now I'm going in with a wet wipe and I'm going to distress just a little bit. I want those details of those flowers to show. I want the piece to be nice and smooth. So I'll run it over the entire piece, just distressing. I find that the Annie Sloan paint does stress, distress really nice. And that's the look I'm going for. And even on the legs, you're definitely when they're unfolded out, you will see the legs. I sprayed them just the same way as I sprayed the trays for the ones that I could take off the legs anyway. And I'm just going on those sharp edges and just revealing some of that black that I spent that time painting and then sealed in so that way it stayed. Before moving on with these pieces, I'm gonna be doing some, as you see, redesign transfer on some of these. And I need to get that chalk paint sealed in. So I'm just using the clear mat by Rust-Oleum and giving them a nice, generous coat now, just a nice misting will be enough, but I, I kind of go different ways to make sure that the mist is hitting all the spots. I go one way and then the other way, and then on a diagonal, just making sure that it's getting covered up. So in my stockpile of purchasing items on the interweb from scrapbook.com, I have all these transfers and I thought this would be a great opportunity. I haven't found a piece of furniture to get to use them on yet but why not some of these beautiful trays so this one comes in four different sheets and it rolls out that it almost fits this entire length of this tray so perfect now there is some patterns that i need to be keeping my eye out for 
so I might have to cut one up or but I definitely love this little bee so I am going to grab on that and make that my center point so I wanted to make sure that that top flower was cut out that it matched and then when I'm following the other pattern for the other piece it kind of left a blank space so I found another little piece that was just kind of hanging out there that matched on the other side so that's the nice thing about these transfers you can cut them apart and use what you need so now I just need to peel off that protective back I don't need that anymore right now I'm pretty sure that I can eyeball this it's just tuck it right into the corner there's so it's okay if it has some leftover space it does not need to be tight against the sides it's going to be such a statement piece anyway that I didn't feel the need to cut up more of a, another piece to fill this completely full. I think it'll be just fine once you get this transfer on there. And then it's sticky enough that I don't need to have it as a flat object, so I don't need to have any masking tape holding it down. That was just so I could tell what I needed to cut up pieces and parts to make my image complete. Now for this top piece, I need to line up the lines of my flower. Even though they cut it in a four piece, they definitely make it all line up. So I just have to take my time and making sure that everything is there. But the top piece overlapped, that plasticky piece overlapped. So I have to wait till I get this image down to actually put that piece down. Now the transfer comes with this wooden tool that you just keep rubbing on making sure that your transfer it's sticky you keep rubbing it off that top piece of plastic and it will adhere to the object that you are transferring it onto and then you just gingerly pull up as you're working to see if it's laying down or not you don't want to go crazy and pull it rip it up because you will rip your transfer but you just this is just one of those be very patient <laughs> jobs and then work work your way around the whole entire image after getting the rest of the image transferred down onto the tray i can now match up the petals on the flower and get that to complete that pattern up there I know if you're a regular viewer to my channel, this is probably going to shock you that I'm putting these pink flowers on it, but aren't they just absolutely gorgeous? Just nice, just a subtle little pink hue to these flowers, and this is just the perfect tray. This design almost fits the entire tray, so I'm just trying to find my center point, making sure that this piece is centered. So now you can see that this is a nice huge image. I think there is actually a different tool that you can buy that I might invest in if I'm doing a lot of transfers because I'm not patient just to use that shorter side of the little stick that they give you. So here I am rubbing it from the side trying to get the most on. I know there's a lot of little details that I'm going to have to go back in with that other piece because it does kind of push on it a little bit on the stronger side. So definitely just gingerly work that those sides I'm going to end up having to cut off because it's grabbing um, up the side and I don't want that pattern going up the side but at least I got it mostly down before having to cut that off. When it comes to tra transfers, you just have to take your time just gingerly, you know, putting a lot of pressure to get that on and then just gingerly pulling back that hard piece of plastic that it comes on. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of little pieces and parts. You think you got it all down, but there's always like that, that one little, little one, but so far so good.
So I wanted to add some of the wording, but I cut them out separately so I could separate the two pieces and put one up under and one above. So the same thing, just rubbing that transfer on and gingerly pulling off that hard plastic. So for my next try, I'm going to be using this springtime. This is some branches and birds, just a beautiful, it's a new stamp to me. I had just purchased it, so I need to get it seasoned, meaning I need to take a, some sandpaper over it so that it there's not so shiny of the side that it helps grab the ink or paint or whatever you're using to load up your stamp. So yes, I love the way that this piece distressed. It is a nice piece just as is, but if you can add a little bit of design, why not? And these simple branches and these birds I think would be perfect. But no, I am not going to just stamp on this tray. It would not stamp very evenly. I'm going to be stamping on some tissue paper. On the back of the packaging that it came in, it shows how the design goes. So I'm using that design kind of as a guide so I can get a feel for what, which way all these branches can go and what, what birds are. Just testing it out. This is the first time I've used this stamp. And I'm not really sure the placement and how the branches all go together, but that's the fun of DIY and especially stamping on a piece of tissue paper. It's very cost efficient to do that. So now that I sort of have them placed with the way that I want them, I'm going to go ahead and hopefully have them stick to my piece of vellum grid sheet. So I know that that's the size that I need for this tray. Oh, <laughs> All these pieces did not stick. It's a brand new set, so I ended up having to use some spray adhesive to get them to stick. Uh, I don't know. There's got to be something better than this spray adhesive because it sure does make a mess of my mat. But I, it is handy and useful for that in, because these are large stamps and I want them to stay on this piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some stays on black ink to get this all inked up. And now I'm just flipping it over onto that tissue paper. You can see that I put that outer packaging underneath because if you don't, it'll go all the way through on your tissue paper. And if you don't want to get your mat that you're using, I have a Cricut mat that I absolutely love and I don't want to get any of the ink on it. That's why I put that piece of plastic underneath there. Just something to protect your mat. So this stamp will be like the cursive letters from IOD that you have to stamp all of them individually because my branches are just hanging out in midair. And you can't beat dollar store tissue paper. You get a whole bunch of sheets for a dollar, so it's perfectly fine to, to do testers on to see if it's a design. At least I wasn't stamping on a, directly onto an item and it didn't work out. That would be a, definitely more tragic than stamping on a piece of tissue paper I can just throw away. So yep, I get that main branch in there. And now to, for control, I'm going to go ahead and put those on my acrylic bl block and then go individually. So now that my branches won't be just hanging out in mid-air like they're separated. Now I know the hard part for me was trying to guesstimate what was going to fit onto the tray, but that's okay. This image is going to take up a good portion of the tray and if I have to cut into a little bit of it, so be it. I do want to add a couple little birds. I had an area that didn't stamp so well, so I was going to try this big bird, but I didn't end up liking it. So I wasn't worried about that because I will just center my image when I go to cut off the excess around the tissue paper. I'll just go ahead and take him off. I'm sorry, little birdie, but I didn't like you. I wanted the much smaller ones. T just to tear this tissue paper, I'm just using a little bit of paintbrush and a little bit of water. It's as simple as that. I still thank you all who shared this tip with me on how to cut off the excess of tissue paper. So I'm just going around as tight as I can to the image itself. And then, yep, I will be going down around that little birdie. I'm sorry, he just did not turn out. That area didn't turn out. And I think actually that branch is too long for my tray. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am just already loving this and I don't even have it attached yet. Oh, so I'm just using some Maj Paj and I've been liking using those um, white bristle brushes that you get 
in the Walmart section. I think they're supposed to be chalk brushes. I, I don't care. It They actually rinse out really nice after using Mod Podge. I don't have any problem cleaning them. And that's nice because I used to use one of those foam ones and then just throw it away. So I love this idea, especially trying to get into the, all the ridges of this rattan, this wicker. This just makes it a little bit easier. And I like to start at my center point when I'm doing tissue paper like this to get one. That way I'm keeping it centered. I already know where my center point is that I is visual to me. And then I will gingerly just start working it down onto that Maj Paj. Then I'll go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side. Nice thing about the stays on ink is it stays on so I can put some more Maj Podge over the top of the image and not have to worry about it smearing. So now I wanted to do a little bit of wording inside to go coordinate with the flowers of this beautiful tray. So I'm going to go in with the IOD typesetting letters and then as you see I type I made out a flower garden and I numbered it just a random number but it doesn't quite fit the image to transfer it is just too too big so yet again I'm going to that tissue paper hack and be able to fit this on without making a mess out of the inside so this IOD stamping mound this flexible vellum that has a grid pattern on it is so handy when it comes to do lettering especially since I'm going to have to be reusing a couple of the letters because it's just the alphabet so I can get this all stamped on I follow the lines of it make it so that it's all even but now I need to go back in and reuse the R and the E so I can match those up I can put those down there first and then I'll remove all the other letters and then match it up Same thing with this piece of tissue paper, just to tear it, tear the excess off, just use that paintbrush and a little bit of water to tear off that excess. So yes, my original idea was to go handle to handle, but I liked it off-centered when I was testing out to fit it in. It would have fit the other way also, but I just like the thought of if somebody has some decor in there, that you still kind of see the wording. So yep, we're gonna apply it just the same way that we did that branches and birds on the other tray, just starting at that halfway point, putting some Maj Podge down, and then gingerly trying to work most of the creases out. I know that there's gonna be little bitty creases, it's tissue paper, but it's that perfectly imperfect of DIYing. And now I'm going around all the outer edges, making sure that they are good in on there. This is a flatter surface than what that rattan was. Usually I would just start in the middle working at the extra mosh posh on top, but I want to make sure that these little corners are all down. Now I need to reattach the legs. Now this legs came with little bitty washers that makes it so it's free flowing that it opens and closes easily now i had a little bit of problem getting them to stay on so i ended up using some of that spray adhesive <laughs> to um get them stuck where they needed to be it just needs to be free flowing from the leg part not necessarily the tray part I need to go ahead and take off the tape and that contact paper that protected the bottom of this tray when i was spray painting I'm gonna go around the outer edge where the tape and the paint meet. There's always that hard crusty where it built up just to take that so it's nice and soft. I'm just gonna run the sandpaper just along the edge, not to distress it, just to remove that hard crusty edge. Finish these pieces up. I'm going to seal them in, all four of them, and using some Rust-Oleum clear coat in the mat. 
you definitely, these are lap trays. People could have food on, food on them. And you just want to protect, that's just a piece of tissue paper with some ink on it. So you definitely want to get this nice and protected. And then after that is dry, I'm going to do one more level of protection and I'm going to seal them in with some Varathane finishing wax. So this should make, make them a nice and protected trays and be a, not only beautiful decor pieces, be, but be very useful. So I hope I have inspired you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way. And I know these lap trays are something that you find all the time. I see them a lot. A lot of times I see that super shiny vinyl -y. I'm I stay clear of that. I'm really not sure how, I know chalk paint's supposed to stick to everything, but I get a little bit nervous as a reseller um, that items won't last. And I definitely want our items to be there for longevity. So I hope I inspired you to look at thrift store flips in a new way or just items that you have laying around your own home. So I thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. Your kind comments, your, your just your thumbs up. It's this the support of the YouTube world and our YouTube family is just wonderful. So if you are new to our channel, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And like always, I'll see you next time, guys.